Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get started with WPX hosting. And in addition to that, I'm gonna explain why I personally host all of my important websites with WPX hosting, including TonyTeaches.tech, my personal blog, my travel blog, my serial blog, all that stuff are hosted with WPX. And we're gonna go right into that, but we will talk about the technical aspects of getting set up with WPX. So if you're interested in that, skip forward, but if you're interested in knowing why I host with WPX, then let's go ahead and look at the pricing page here. So uh, I have links in the description below. If you do use those links and make a purchase, I will earn a commission. So I thank you for your support for that. Um, at WPX.net, click on start now and you'll see the pricing. So right off the bat, we're using a Lightspeed server. Now, in the past, I've created videos about the performance of Lightspeed versus Nginx versus Apache and Lightspeed was right there in the middle, um, but that is not the reason that I'm choosing WPX hosting. It is a combination of factors, including the price, uh, the speed, and the customer support. Okay, so customer support right off the bat, the best customer support I've seen across the board, everywhere from DreamHost to Cloudways to Linode to any other any of the hosting platforms that I've talked about on this channel, WPX is at the very, very top. Um, there's three different types of pricing plans here, business, professional, and elite. And if you do the math for the business plan, you get five websites, about 20 bucks a month. That's right around $5 per month per website. And that is, uh, in my opinion, very affordable for what you get, which includes 10 gigabytes of storage, 100 gigabytes of bandwidth, and unlimited cloud CDN. There's, there's the customer support. Um, so 10 gigabytes, that might not seem like a lot to people, especially spread across five different websites, but I am pretty darn familiar with hosting websites and at least for uh, the types of blogs that I'm making and the technical aspects of TonyTeaches.tech, none of my websites are anywhere near two gigabytes in size. And the reason for that is uh, I take good care in compressing my images and all that stuff prior to uploading them, making sure I have the right file formats and all that stuff. So I don't think most websites would surpass that unless it's a very, very, very large website. So don't worry too much about the storage space unless you know that you're above that already. Um, so this this is this is the recommended plan that I use. Uh, if you have more websites or need more space, you can go to the professional or elite plan. Uh, let's go ahead and show you how to get started here from a technical perspective. So if you click on this, you can choose to either host in the US, the UK, or Australia. Most of my uh, visitors are going to be in the US, so I'm going to pick that location. And here you have two different options for getting started. You can either uh, have somebody from WPX move an existing website to their hosting platform, or you can choose this option if you already have a domain name and you just wanna start with a fresh install of WordPress, or you have this other option over here if you uh, need to purchase a new domain name and you need new hosting altogether. So those are your two options. Um, you can put in your domain name if you have one here and click continue. Now I'm not gonna purchase another hosting package because I already have hosting with WPX. So uh, what I'm gonna do is actually open that up here in another window and this is what your dashboard will look like once you do go ahead and create your account. Now in here, what I'm gonna go through with you is actually adding another website to WPX to show you how that process works. And we're gonna associate a domain name and install an SSL certificate and all that stuff. So uh, under your service details, you can see a good overview of um, your server details and such. And we'll, we'll be in here in a little bit when we set up the domain name, but let's go into the manage websites section here. And in here, I am using four out of my five websites that I'm allowed to have on this hosting platform. So we're gonna add the fifth one today. We can do that by clicking on add new website. And the domain name for this one is going to be thriftytony.com. And we do want to install WordPress with that. So click on the install WordPress checkbox, click next. And this is where you can pick your credentials for uh, the WordPress user. Okay, so uh, my admin email, that's fine, tony at tonyteachers.tech. The admin username, I'll say thrifty, Tony, and I will type in a password here. Okay, and I'll confirm that password. 
All right, and now I will click on create create website. Um, so that will go ahead and do its thing. I think this will take a little bit, so we will fast forward through this part. Okay, and just a few minutes later, we have our domain name and WordPress installed. So you can see that up here, uh, WordPress was installed successfully and your website domain name was added successfully. So we'll mark these as red. We'll get out of here. And now we see that we have thriftytony.com here. Um, what we need to do is actually link the domain name thriftytony.com to the WPX hosting platform. And wherever you bought your domain name, I bought my domain name from Google Domains, but wherever you bought your domain name from, you'll have to go out there and add an A record to point it back to WPX. Now that's not the only way you can do this. There's other ways that you can configure your domain name, but I'm just gonna show you this way because this is what I've done for all of my other websites. So um, what we're gonna do is go to your service details again. And there's two pieces of information. If you're gonna use the WPX cloud, which is the CDN, uh, you'll wanna note these two IP addresses. Um, if you're not gonna take advantage of that, then you're gonna use this IP address. So uh, I'm just gonna copy this one for now and open up my Google Domains dashboard, which is right here. And then the, the domain name that I own, you do have to own the domain name, thriftytony.com. I'm gonna click on that. And again, wherever, you're, wherever you bought your domain name, go there find the DNS settings for that domain name. So here's my DNS settings. And what we wanna do is add a custom resource record um, with the value of at, which is the, the domain name itself, and a record, and the IP address of this one ending in .33, and then we'll grab the other one ending in .47, and we'll associate that with that same record. So we'll add that. And then we also want to add the www version of your website. So www.thriftytony.com in this case, it's gonna be an A record as well. And then we'll add the same IP addresses. So this one ending in 33 and this one ending in 47. So we'll add that. Now this message up here says changes to thriftytony.com saved. They'll take effect within the next 48 hours. Now I've never seen it take that long you can check the progress of your DNS propagation with a tool like dnschecker.org. So if I type in thrifty, if you type in your domain name, so for me, thriftytony.com, check the A record status, we'll search that. Uh, we'll see that some of the servers around the world have already seen that change happen. So if, if your request goes through this server in Chattanooga Park, um, you will be able to serve the website, uh, but these other ones will still have to uh, wait a little bit. See, they're, uh, they're updating as, as time goes on. But uh, for now, that should be okay because we have a couple other things that we want to configure. So let's get out of here. We'll minimize this and open up our WPX hosting again. And what we're going to do is look at installing an SSL certificate for our website. Um, so right now, let's, let's check it out. Let's go to our website. Uh, we'll go back over here and go to thriftytony.com. And it's just a basic 2021 theme WordPress website. Uh, there's no SSL certificate installed. Um, and we'll, I'll show you how to access the admin dashboard in a second, but let's, let's look at the SSL certificate first. So back in your Word, WPX dashboard, what we want to do is go to manage websites and then find your domain name thriftytony.com and then you have this SSL option. So under here, we want to install a free SSL certificate. So click on that. And uh, the default option is a Let's, en Let's Encrypt SSL certificate. Um, they're going to install it for this the, the, the regular domain name and then the www version of the domain name. Uh, that's good for us. So let's go ahead and click on install. And it says if it, an SSL certificate exists, it'll be over and that's okay. Hit yes. And again, this will take a few minutes, so we'll fast forward through this. Okay, and this time it did not take that long at all. It was only like 20 to 30 seconds. So the Let's Encrypt SSL certificate was installed for Thrifty Tony. Uh, we'll mark that as red. Uh, but what we would need to do is actually tell WordPress to use HTTPS in the URL. So we'll do that next. And in order to do that, we'll have to log into our... Uh, WordPress admin dashboard. So um, let's look at the settings for this this website here. And you'll see that we have some options as far as uh, multi-site WordPress installs. We can change the PHP version. 
uh, some email settings as well. But the redirect setting that we're interested in is redirecting all non-SSL requests to either www.thriftytony.com or thriftytony.com. I don't like the www, so I usually do this and check that box. Uh, but before we actually commit these changes, we want to log into WordPress and tell WordPress, like I said, to use HTTPS. So let's open up our WordPress uh, admin dashboard. We can access that at your domain name slash WP dash admin. Hit enter. And we'll verify that we're not a robot. Okay, and now we can log in with the credentials that we created uh, back when we installed WordPress on WPX hosting. And in your WordPress admin dashboard, what we wanna do is come down to settings, general, and you'll see that our URL for the WordPress address and the site address don't have an S in the, the domain name. So we wanna add that for each one. So HTTPS, HTTPS, everything else looks good. So we'll save those changes. And now when that's done, we can go back to WPX and apply the changes to redirect all traffic to thriftytony.com. So we'll save that. Okay, and that setting has been applied. Now the one last thing you want to look at down here is the CDN, which is under the WPX cloud section. And um, by default, uh, I'm not sure if they turn on the CDN or not. Let's see what this says when we load this. And yeah, so the default is having the CDN enabled. Now, this is good to know that if you wanna turn off the CDN for some reason, if you're having caching issues or if you need to empty the cache explicitly, you can do that down here. But again, if you do have any type of issues like that, I find the WPX customer service to be uh, phenomenal as far as uh, being quick to respond. They're literally right down here. If you have to ask them anything, uh, they respond in less than 30 seconds, as it says there, um, and they're very knowledgeable. So um, as far as getting configured with WordPress, uh, you know, setting up a theme or add, installing a plugin or stuff like that, um, I'm not going to show you that in this video. I have another video about 15 important things to do after installing WordPress. I'll point you there for next. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Subscribe for more like this for me in the future, and if you do, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.